Hello, my name is Dr. Carol Vieira, and greetings to anybody out there watching this. Um, it's nice to see you in this way. I usually see people face to face, in groups, individually, on Skype, whatever, um, but don't usually make these general kinds of um, communications. But there was something really pressing on my mind um, recently that I thought I'd share this way. This is not medical advice, this is, I guess, educational, you might want to call it. Um, or just a thought in case it resonates with somebody and is useful. It's uh, around the, um, the area of decision making. Uh, and so what kind of decisions are people having to make? Well, right now, one of them that I hear a lot about is, okay, um, what program am I going to go to if you're a student? Okay, where am I going to go to school? Who am I going to study with? Um, in some cases, you know, what, what am I going to do or what am I going to drop? You know, maybe you're a performing artist or whatever and you're thinking, maybe I don't want to do this, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Or um, it might be, you know, what medical treatment should I have? How is that going to affect my life? Um, what, what train do I take or do I buy a car? I mean, you know, what color do I want to paint my house? It, there's all kinds of things with varying degrees of seriousness, but I'm I'm talking to you today because some of these are serious and they are life-altering. And one of the things that impresses me, um, or concerns me, might be a better way of putting about putting it, is that many people make their decisions uh, from a place of fear, which is also a place of stress. And if you're making your decision from a place of fear, i.e. stress, you are making that decision with your lower survival brain, okay? You're not making it with your um, higher cortical structures, which basically means you're not making it with a part of your brain that was designed to make decisions. So, uh, and why, why would somebody make a decision out of fear? Um, well, obviously being left out or not being, you know, one of the group or not being, um, you know, popular in some way or another, or not trusting your own instincts about something and feeling that you have to uh, second guess it and look over your shoulder and see what, it, what, what everybody else is doing and make your decision from there. Um, and sometimes that might work out for you if everything just kind of like falls together and you end up being in the right place at the right time in spite of yourself. But really, I think the, my point here is that your best bet of really making a decision that resonates with who and what you are is to not be in a survival response, not be in fight or flight, and there's, there's many ways around that obviously, but, um, but to be in a more relaxed place which will engage your higher cortical functions and other things that are beyond the scope of this few minutes uh, that will help you make a decision that is true to you and true to your intentions and goals that they'll match up a little better and that you'll be more on the right track. Does that mean it still might be a decision that you know maybe wasn't perfect? Sure, but at least you'll be in a place in yourself to better see that earlier and be able to make a course adjustment. If you keep coming back to home base, which is yourself, which can only be experienced when you're in a more balance, centered, and relaxed state. And if this, if this is of interest to anyone, I suppose I could make more videos about how you might easily do that um, without a lot of um, sophisticated um, procedures. Okay, so I'm going to leave this for now. My phone is ringing and um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to get it. So bye for now.